Hey guys, welcome back. It's Felicia and Rowena. And in the skincare and beauty world, you might have noticed that a lot of brands are changing their messaging, their packaging and content to being clean. A lot of stores have also popped up curating only clean products like Detox Market, Beauty Counter, Clean Market, and even retailers like Sephora, Target and even drugstores are coming out with their own in-house brands designed to offer clean products at a more affordable price. But the question is, how many of us really even know what the term clean means. <laughs> After this research and script, I honestly don't even know anymore. <laughs> yeah, like there's just so many different ways to describe it. And I think in a general sense, the clean beauty movement has really divided and polarized skincare beauty products into like a good and bad or a toxic, non-toxic and using terms like natural, organic. All in all, there's nothing wrong with wanting a simpler, cleaner way of life. And if anything, we're all about this. So that made us think, Hmm, is there scientific evidence <laughs> showing that natural is really better for our skin? And does this mean that all the products we love that don't have these labels are bad or harmful for our skin? In this video, we're going to tell you guys the important facts to understand clean beauty, break down the top three ingredients we love to hate, parabens, phthalates, and sulfates. As always, we're going to be suggesting a bunch of products that we enjoy that are clean to us. And speaking of products, we know how much you guys and ourselves love saving and getting some good deals, which is why we partnered up with Rakuten on this video. Before you go, oh man, another sponsor on YouTube. I just want to learn about clean skincare. Don't worry, we're getting there. Here is out for a second. Rakuten is the largest cashback site that partners with over 2,500 of the biggest name brands, like the ones we commonly shop at, like Sephora, Ulta, Derm Store, and most skincare brands to offer cash back and things like coupons and promo codes all for free. So just click through the links found on Rakuten and then shop on the store's website like you normally would. That's it. Rakuten was actually previously known as eBay. So you may already be a member and you're familiar with this whole cashback system and the services. So Phil and I use this all the time, especially when we're getting skincare. Because it's like, if I was to go in store and buy something, I might as well get a little bit of cash back, which is why I go online and use what was formerly eBay. So now it's Rakuten. I think I've saved like at least a thousand or more ever since I started using it like two years ago. If this is something you want to try, you can get a $10 welcome bonus after you join for free using the link in our description box and place your first order of $25 or more. We're also going to do a $200 giveaway at the end, so stay tuned for that. Alrighty, so hopefully through this video, not only do we save some money, but we can learn to decide which products are going to be suitable for our own situations, regardless of whether it falls into this clean category or not. So are you guys a little confused? Good, because let's get around to undoing that. <laughs> As soon as you start looking into clean brands, you might get a little confused because the thing clean beauty is defined differently by different people, by different places, by different brands. Yeah, and brands can be considered clean if they fit any or all of these categories. The first and most prominent category is the ingredients argument, where they're free of X, Y, Z, sulfate free, paraben free. This is how Sephora curates which brands get the honor of that clean at Sephora green stick when you shop online. It's also how brands like Drunk Elephant with the Suspicious Six, Bliss, Ren, and many, many others approach clean beauty. The issue here is that the makers of clean products, they can't agree to what substances should or shouldn't be avoided. So there is a very large degree of ambiguity. <laughs> then there are these farm to face or nature to face type brands that use more natural and specific ingredients. These include Indy Lee, Osea, Pharmacy, Tata Harbor, and many, many more. <laughs> then there's brands that state in their bottles that they're vegan friendly or they're non-toxic or sustainable. So with all these different definitions, you can quickly see how confusing it can get. And there's a big reason why. It's because no one really regulates these claims. Correct. <laughs> Let's take a look into that. 
In the US, the Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA, helps to regulate a lot of skincare and beauty products. What we're going to find out is that it's really not as strict as it sounds. At all. Most of our skincare falls into the cosmetics definition, which is defined by the FDA as articles intended to be rubbed, poured, sprinkled, or sprayed on or otherwise applied to the human body. I should change my application to <laughs> sprinkling the toner on. <laughs> <laughs> so then, with all the products that we see, do they really have to be approved by the FDA before they hit the shelves? The answer is a big fat no. What this means is that it's a big trust game. They're like the flexible trusting parents that we all wanted when we were young. <laughs> I definitely didn't have that. Cannot relate. <laughs> so when you hear the words natural green, synthetic free, these aren't official terms. So don't be too swayed by it if you do see it. The point is brands are allowed to release products using certain marketing buzzwords and stating certain claims without it being ever tested because they can. And this is the potentially misleading part to it all. Currently, the FDA only restricts 11 ingredients in cosmetics. 11. Yeah. can almost put it on all 10 fingers. Yeah. The people who have an extra pinky can do it on all hands. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the other side of the extreme, we have the EU, the European Union, pretty much banning anything that's remotely questionable. And their list of banned ingredients is 1,328 within that's the like cosmetic pillars. Many. Yeah. <laughs> like, Just keep going. <laughs> so we're not seeing the FDA is bad, they're definitely doing their job. It's just when it comes to skincare, just know that it gets a little loosey-goosey. Now we move on to talking about the top three most hated ingredients. I can almost hear the dun 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 when we say this. Like the, the murmurs, like, oh no, no, they're yeah. going there. Are they going? And you probably know the ones we mean. Parabens, phthalates, sulfates like SLS and SLES. So first up on the chopping block, parabens. <laughs> <laughs> parabens is a class of preservatives which helps products last longer and our skincare typically contains different types of parabens. And why it has a bad rap is because it's been stated that parabens can disrupt the function of hormones. So why parabens are used in our skincare products is because the majority of our precious jar and bottles are made up of water and you can see that at the back of the label as the first ingredient that comes up, water or agua. So if we're talking about a product with even a single drop of of water in it, it'll need a preservative because a world without preservatives is a world of potential mold, bacteria, fungal infections, and microbial growth. So just think of those dishes that you left out for a little too long in the sink. Well, nasty. And your cups? <laughs> yeah, my cups, my coffee cups. <laughs> we read into a lot of different studies and claims from EWG, the Cosmetic Ingredient Review, cancer societies, as well as different skin and health journals, because there really is just so much information out there and they all have differing points of views. And we'll give you guys a snapshot summary for both sides. Mm -hmm. Katie Patrick, a health information officer at Cancer Research UK says, for most chemicals, what's important is the dose we're exposed to. Most things have the potential to cause damage, but only at levels far higher than we ever experience in cosmetics or in day-to-day -day life. Yeah, like you can take it out of context and inject a big amount, but all those amounts don't reflect what's actually in our skincare products. So that's another thing to keep in mind. A review by the Cosmetic Ingredient Review or the CIR expert panel first concluded in 1984 that parabens are safe, but yes, this was a while ago. So then they reopened the paraben case in 2012, and it was shown again that parabens are rarely irritating or sensitizing to normal human skin at concentrations used in cosmetics. And typically, parabens are used at levels ranging from 0.01 to 0.3%. The FDA uses information provided by the CIR to give safety assessments. Then, looking into the tests claiming parabens cause cancer and hormonal disruption, there are parabens everywhere, even in foods. So when stated in a few studies that they found parabens in urine samples, this doesn't completely sell the story. And our human body is very different from those of mice and little cute 
or not cute. Yeah, like I feel like our skin is completely different. So after all this research, it really made us think and question, could this be the case where information is somewhat taken out of context? Because of this chart, we're seeing a lot of unpreserved products. So an example that we give often on our channel is <laughs> Herbivore. Dear Herbivore, I do really love their yeah. products, but it molds. The color changes, and this isn't just like a my experience thing. I went through all of Reddit's like beauty yes. forums, and it's a co it's a pretty common thing, even if you refrigerate the products. Mm. The unfortunate thing is, maybe they're trying to put in more natural preservatives, but it is also quite an expensive product, yeah. and if it goes bad so quickly, I think that's where like this uneasy feeling comes from because it's fine, it's natural, but it doesn't last long, and it changes, and I don't want to smear like potential mold on my. Face. Face. The thing with taking out one paraben, you need to put in so many different other, other alternatives. Yeah. And then you don't even know what those other ingredients they're putting in to substitute, whether that's even better or not. And another example is one that we found from The Guardian, which interviewed Tiffany Masterson, who's the founder of Drunk Elephant, and Drunk Elephant, as we know, is also considered one of those clean brands. And she was asked why she put parabens into her Toxic 6, Toxic 6, Toxic six 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 <laughs> that list. <laughs> and she says, I don't think they're bad for you. So why ditch them? And she says, consumers don't want them. So sometimes it's really just that simple. If we're told that something is bad for us based on a few tests, which sometimes might not really represent the real picture, as consumers will just follow that and try to avoid it. Some brands are changing their formulations to include things like vegetable glycerin or neem oil, or there's things like 190 proof alcohol, an effective more natural preservative. And we don't really know how well these work, but just letting you guys know there are options out there if you don't want parabens. Also alcohols like organic ethanol, grape alcohol, benzoyl alcohol, and even witch hazel. And if you want resources, we'll leave links to places where you can search up ingredients below. So we're not really here to choose a side, we're just presenting the facts that are out there that's actually available to any of you who want to dig, but it is really confusing to dig. <laughs> then there's the good old SLS. The term sulfates is broad and it refers to salts that result from a reaction involving sulfuric acid. SLS is a surfactant, which means it has the ability to break the surface tension of water and separate different molecules from one another. Another, which then creates this kind of foaming and lather on the skin. And this reaction helps to clear away, you know, the dirt and the debris and the oil that forms on the top layer of our skin after a nice juicy day of frolicking out in the sun. The hot, hot sun. Yeah. Which is why it's included in cleansing products for the face, hair, and body. But when people are throwing their arms in the air over sulfates in their products, it's probably over two reasons. First is because there are claims that SLS thins the top layer of the skin, causing dryness and therefore leading to things like irritation. The second claim is that SLS is a carcinogenic, which means it can disrupt the cells within the body and cause issues. So what's the deal here? <laughs> this is what we found. Sulfates are really good at cleaning and sometimes too good. This is why it's used in a lot of different products from household cleaners to shampoos and a lot of self-care products. According to research in household cleaners, SLS concentrations above 2% can cause mild skin irritation after 24 hours of exposure. 24 hours, that's a long time. I don't think anyone will be scrubbing your tub or your face with foaming things or washing your scalp for 24, <laughs> 24 hours. <laughs> also, dermatologists are on the fence about SLS and say it can occasionally be problematic, like anything else, but it depends on person to person and whether the product is left on or whether it's washed off. And if it is designed to be left on our skin, it has much less concentration of this anyway. For example, a person with eczema, like Rowena, <laughs> already has a very like weakened skin barrier, which can be more vulnerable because the skin, like those building blocks are broken, right? Which means that it's more vulnerable to SLS compared to a person who doesn't because essentially it can just get through that cracked border much easier and cause irritation. Paula's Choice also states sulfates are not a problem, but once organizations and companies build up fear among consumers about certain cosmetic ingredients, there's almost no going back. 
the damage is done. So our thoughts on sulfates are if you have sensitive skin, then avoid it. And if you don't know, just walk over to your counter or your sink, mm -hmm. look at the back of your face wash, and if there's SLS and SLES in there and your skin has been fine, you haven't found any irritation, mm -hmm. then you're probably not sensitive to it. Yeah, like the La Roche-Posay gel medicated cleanser that I rave about all the time. The second product is SLES or SLS, but like that has caused nothing but good things to my skin. And a lot of you guys have actually showed us that you bought it as well after that video and it's helped you. And for hair, it's even easier. If you don't like your hair with that squeaky clean feeling, then either wash your hair less often or find an Elsa Ellis free shampoo. Or also if you have, if you like color treated your hair, mm. best to avoid sulfate. Once again, it really does come down to testing it out on your own skin and finding out whether it is good or bad for your specific condition. Next up, phthalates. Another ingredient you'll see has been taken off almost all products to be considered clean. <laughs> it's in a very wide range of products, from toys to food products to medical devices, and then obviously cosmetics and shampoos. <laughs> because in toys or plastic products, they use to keep it from going brittle and breaking. You know when plastic's kind of like bendy? The thing to know is that there are lots of different types of phthalates and we're exposed to them a lot. The FDA itself has said that they don't have any information showing that the cosmetics containing phthalates and parabens are harmful to consumers when the products are used as intended. As with any ingredient, phthalates could cause allergic reactions in some, but even those are rare at the level found in cosmetics. So to sum up, there's not much good human data to support the fears about these chemicals so just keep that in mind, and now we're going to talk about our favorite clean beauty products. So moving on to products, we arranged it to show you guys that even in clean um, skincare brands and products, there's like drugstore, affordable options, and then it moves on to independently created brands like Crave. Even K-Beauty has some, which is Purito, Make Prem, and I'm From. And then there's like the more high-end ones like Glow Recipe, Pharmacy, Tata Harbor, and Osea. Starting off with Verst, this is a very affordable, clean skincare range that you can get at Target. It's very millennially packed. <laughs> Cutely packed. Yeah. I really love this emergency eye mask because I use it as an eye cream, not an eye mask. But what you'll feel is that it's a really, ooh, it's a really luscious kind of texture that blends all over the eye. And it's all super affordable. It's yeah. like very smooth, right? I think all their products at Target are under $20. So you can get that very easily. And they also have a serum, which is something that you don't see with a lot of low-end um, or affordable priced products. So this is their brightening serum with vitamin C and licorice root extract. So what Verse stands for is just all about only including what's needed at affordable price point because skincare should be available to Everyone. any age. Yeah, yeah. I just want, this is the gel cream. Ooh, this is And nice. I think this is what broke me out. Wait, try it, I wanna see. But I don't, my skin's not inflamed anymore. It's very like summer breeze. It's very lightweight. It's a true gel uh, moisturizer. And on that note, for something at Target, mm. Low Recipe, they also have a line called Sweet Chef. Oh, yes. Face masks and serums. Mm -hmm. Honey Bell. Honey Bell is like all natural, all natural. So the ingredient for this is coconut milk, rose kaolin clay, hibiscus leaf, beet, and that's it and they're all organic ingredients. I think the benefit of this is that it's in a powder form, yeah. so it doesn't need preservatives. Yeah. <laughs> so what you do with this mask, we've used it in a previous video, you just mix it with either like yogurt or water or apple cider vinegar, yeah. and you just make your own paste and then put it on. So then the Honey Bell Foaming Facial Soap, Safflower, Sunflower, Coconut, Vegetable, Glycerin, Rosemary Extract, Tea Tree Essential Oil, Extra essential oil blend and love. And love, oh, sweet. the most important thing. And it says this has tea tree essential oil. Essential oils can also be irritating. So it's a double-edged yeah. sword. Shout out to Iris and Calvin. Friends. Friends. <laughs> Speaking of friends. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> our girl, Leah. <laughs> so we've talked 
endlessly about extensively. Yeah, about Crave's uh, products. So we really love the cleanser because in the cleanser, there's oat, there's hemp, vitamin B5. So all of them are listed for you to see and they're all very calming ingredients. Yeah. Um, and I think with Leah, that's what she wanted for her skincare line, yeah. right? Anyone can use it, it strips it back to basics. Yep, and then good for your skin barrier. Mm. Healthy skin barriers, like what she's all about. But there's also the glycolic toner, the Great Berry Relief. Moving on to Purito. This is my new like holy grail. It's an up and coming brand for sure. And the deep sea water cream, it's made of 60% deep sea water. There's 2% niacinamide. It's for whitening and anti wrinkle. There's a lot of extracts in there and the back is in Korean. So let me... But this is like for dry skin, right? Yeah. Oh, it's so light. Uh, no, I think you could use it too. It's this so one's light. for moisturizing. Oh. Yeah. The orange one is thicker than this one. This one's just like mm. straight cream, mm. creamy. And then there's this one, which is the Centella Green Level Recovery Cream. It's interesting because it says it's EWG Green Level yeah. Ingredients. So they've like certified their ingredients with the EWG. So this one is mainly Centella based ingredient. It's also got niacinamide 2%. So it's very soothing and calming. And it's like a typical lotion consistency that just like absorbs it. It's very skin. similar to the, uh, the deep water cream. Yeah, all the consistencies are very similar. <laughs> and then this is gonna be a gift for you. Oh, boy. I love anything Centella. The Buffet Serum, I think this is what they're known for. The Buffet Serum and the Recovery Cream. The first sensitized skin and to help repair your skin barrier. Talking about skin barrier, I really like Ren and I wasn't aware that they were so like ingredient clean as well because they say they don't have parabens, sulfates, mineral oil, petrolatum. So once again, another ingredient focused one, but their products just work. I've been loving this clarifying toner. It's got all the AHAs, but it's so gentle and it doesn't sting. And then this one is their like calming gel cream. Also really good, but Ren is a little bit more expensive. I really enjoy their products because it's very calming. And for Ling skincare, we've talked about this quite a in, in depth in yeah. previous videos, so we won't go too much into it, but all of their ingredients is based off of clean, natural, good for you. And because it's traditional ingredients, like they use goji berry and they also have ginseng, so it's all like actually powerful antioxidant ingredients. Um, so yeah, this is just their replenishing because we got a facial from them. Flourish. So this is a brand, um, we met the founder and she basically came out with this serum, which is mainly green tea water. And she sources the green tea from an island from Korea. It's not Jeju. Even the bottle is very symbolic of It's like in the historic dramas where they make the like soy sauce and the fermented stuff in the big the barrels, kind of, but like the ceramic. So this is for rejuvenation and natural glow. 54% green tea water. It's non-toxic and natural. So that's that one if you're curious. They also have a face mask. So next is Make Prem. I think that's how you're supposed to... I don't know how you... Make Prem. Mm. Oh, I can't read code. I think it might be 100% chaga mushroom. But we'll, we'll put the actual number up. So this is very soothing and very calming. Also very hydrating. So there's that, and then there's the Hydrate Me Micro Tension Cream that I've talked about a lot, a lot. This is too creamy now for the Summer. summertime, but I'll get back to this. Mm. And this, I believe, is one of their newer products, the Low Irritant Mineral Sunscreen Stick. I actually haven't tried it yet, but I've heard really great things, and I'm excited to dig into this. A lot of different skincare brands are coming out with this stick yeah. format for sunscreen. Smells like essential oil. Yeah. Great for on the go. There's also a brand called I'm From. This is the rice toner. And then this is the vitamin tea tree gel. So the rice toner has 77.78% .78 rice water. Interesting. This is beautiful. Man, Korean skincare packaging is like next level. And they have a really good mugwort mask. Oh, that one's really popular. That this for you. What is it? Cream, oh. water gel cream. Whoa, wow, that's legit gel. Last one is the Sior, Sioris 
well loved. The very well loved. I'm almost done. I just bought a new one. For this, it's made with 78% organic fruit water, and all the ingredients are sourced from Korea, harvested in peak season. So the really cool thing is that there's a different formulation for springtime and for wintertime mm. because of the different fruits that are in season. There's also no harmful artificial fragrance, additives, or harmful chemicals. This is also a cruelty-free brand, so this is a really great line of products for anyone with dry, dehydrated, sensitive skin. And then over on that side, those are the three Osea products that I really love. This one in particular, it's the Hyaluronic C Serum. Yeah, it's like goop when you put it on and then all of a sudden it becomes water. It's really amazing and it seeps deep into the skin, I feel like. Ooh, it is like goop. Yeah. Wow. And then it just completely evaporates. It becomes this lightweight thing. So it changes consistency actually, which I find is like interesting. And then there's also the blemish balm, which is very tingly. It has grapeseed oil, coconut derived preservatives. It's also got rosemary. I really love this from Osea and Osea. They're also very up there in the clean. So it says they are vegan, gluten-free, no animal testing. Made external, in Malibu. External use only. <laughs> and there's also Tata Harbor, which is a very, very clean brand. This is their most, I think one of their most popular products, the resurfacing mask. It's 100% natural and non-toxic. So <laughs> the labeling we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Now we understand so much more. But they are very well known in the space yeah. of sourcing specific um, ingredients from a And place. from what I heard from a Sephora rep when I was buying Tata Harbor for my mom is that the glass they use, it's like specific crystal or specific something that helps um, preserve the product even better from mm. outside. And then we have pharmacy that we've talked about a lot in our previous videos. Farm to face. Farm to face. It's very farm to face. Yeah. And there's the Glow Recipe Pink Watermelon Juice, which is my favorite. And this is made with a high percentage of watermelon. So those are just some of the clean brands that we enjoy or that we consider clean for us. We don't want to get into what like you guys should follow or what you guys should think this is just what works for us and I think that's the key takeaway. Know what terms are unregulated so that you know not to put so much emphasis on it and which ones are. Hope you guys learned a little more about what clean beauty is. And if you want to get any of these products, for most of them, there will be on websites that offer cash back from Rakuten. So Rakuten's also co-sponsoring a $200 giveaway with us. So sign up for Rakuten using the first link in the description box and click the second link to enter our giveaway. Yay! Yay! So make sure you save money if you are going to buy any of these products. Yes. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye!